Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today. I am Trace and this is episode 3 of 5 on Blood. If you're not familiar with Test 2 Plus, if this is your first time tuning in, thank you for coming. Hello, welcome. If you've tuned in before, hi again, welcome back. If you haven't yet, please subscribe so we know you're out there. And if you also haven't, listen to the first two parts of this series. We've talked about blood, what it is, and we've talked a little bit about blood disorders and why they're bad. Today we're going to talk about curing it and the people who work on these cures for blood disorders. So it would make more sense if you checked out the ones from yesterday and the day before. Yesterday we talked about cancers of the blood. It was a real downer and I apologize for that. But today we're going to talk about people who treat, diagnose, and prevent cancers and diseases of the blood. This is called hematology. It's the study of the blood and also of bone marrow diseases. Someone who studies hematology would be called a hematologist. You've probably heard that word before. And they're trying to fix all of these different things. They can do some tests on your blood. When they draw blood from you, they use it to do a variety of different things. This is a few of the tests to help figure out blood-related disorders. One of the first that they would do is called a complete blood count, or CBC. It's basically a broad screening. It looks at how healthy a person's blood is. CBCs can be done in a routine health checkup, but they can also be done when they know something is wrong, we need to figure it out. This is where you would kind of start. It can even become a regular test to monitor the condition of someone who has a disorder, who they already know has a disorder. It can help diagnose blood disorders, cancers, anemias, leukemias, and it measures both your white blood cell count and your red blood cell count. And not only does the test measure the number of red and white blood cells, but it also measures the average size of those cells. Because if you remember, leukemia grows larger and larger white blood cells. This is called a mean corpuscular volume. It also measures the red cell distribution width, basically the variation of the size of your red blood cells. And then it can take in the average amount of hemoglobin in those cells. That's the mean corpuscular hemoglobin count. It does all sorts of stuff. But generally, they just call it the CBC. After the CBC, they do a blood smear. This is where they take a drop of your blood, they put it on a glass slide. Looks great on camera, so you see it all the time in crime shows and shows like Dexter. Love that. So good. And then there's a special stain that's added and an automated digital system analyzes the results, which is not at all like you see on TV, but it's much more accurate than putting a you know, little eyeball on a microscope. You can just give it to a computer and be like, count all of this stuff. If the CBC shows that the cells are abnormal, they're immature, there's too many, there's too few, then they can do a blood smear. Or if someone, you know, exhibits some of the symptoms of a blood disorder, they would do a blood smear. If there are findings between the CBC and the blood smear that show something might not be quite right, then they can run a whole battery of other tests because, you know, science. You gotta test and then find out and then test and then find out. The tests that you would run after the CBC and after the smear would be for things that you suspect could be missing or wrong or, or somehow uh, part of the disorder. So you could test for the iron in your blood, you could test for folate or vitamin B12, or there's hemoglobinopathy evaluations, there's bone marrow aspiration and biopsy and flow cytometry, which is how much blood is moving at any given time. There's immunophenotyping, which is immune cells and what types of immune cells you have. There's so much stuff. Unfortunately, some of these tests will then find something wrong if there is something wrong. We're not saying it's unfortunate that they found it. It's just unfortunate that something is wrong. Some blood disorders and cancers do have treatments. Anemia, again, the most common type of blood disorder, can be treated sometimes. It depends on what causes it. If the anemia stems from an iron deficiency or a nutritional anomaly, they might say, just change your diet and then your anemia may abate. If a person's anemia stems from a chronic disorder or a disease that's affecting you, and this is a symptom of that, the doctor might try and fix that chronic disease, which might eventually fix the anemia. In some cases, the doctor could prescribe medication that would make bone marrow produce more red blood cells, and then you wouldn't have the anemia anymore. There are also tons of other cases and treatments. I mean, we could run them down, but that would be a whole episode. And I suggest if you're interested, look those up on your own. This kind of stuff, if you learn it at the right age, I can imagine 
just learning about this would make me want to like go be a doctor. You know, when I was young, I was like, ew, medicine, fluids, gross. But learning about it like this, kind of getting into the granular details of blood, it's super exciting, right? It's super interesting to think about it as this fluid that suspends all of these different life-giving molecules. As far as preventing anemia, by the way, if you think you might have anemia, talk to your physician, but eat well and eat foods with high levels of iron and B12, and that could potentially help. Not necessarily medical advice, just general advice. There's also, of course, blood clots, as we mentioned earlier, and to treat blood clots, it would depend on where that clot is. There are medicines that will prevent clots from forming, you know, they'll call anticoagulants, you know, things that make sure your blood doesn't coagulate group together. There's medicine aimed at specifically causing blood clots to dissolve. There's catheter-directed thrombolysis, but before you freak out, it's not that kind of catheter. Catheter means different things. The catheter is surgically inserted into, say, a blood vessel and aimed at the blood clot that they need to remove, and they use clot-dissolving medication to get it out of there. It's a very directed therapy. And there's also a, another treatment option. You can literally just go in and cut out the clot that is a problem. This is called a thrombectomy. Things like leukemia, which we ended on yesterday, and kind of a bit of a downer, can be treated. But first we have to figure out what kind of leukemia it is. So we'll perform a biopsy of your bone marrow. Not a comfortable procedure. Bone marrow is way in there, so you have to get to it and then take it out. The thing is, we can't really run down all the different types of leukemia treatment since you can have different types of leukemias and lymphomas and non and Hodgkin's and so on and so on. Um, but essentially, it will depend on your age, your health, and the type of leukemia they find. Acute leukemia, they might give you chemotherapy because chemo targets rapidly dividing cells. So they will stop those cells from dividing and hopefully stop the leukemia. But there are other things like biological therapy, radiation therapy, stem cell transplantation to give you better or new bone marrow. Uh, there are all sorts of different treatment options. And again, of course, the one I mentioned the other day about modifying viruses to have them attack things like leukemia is super experimental and brand new, but that's like the future, right? It's kind of hacking into cells and telling them to attack your cancers for you. Then there are some treatments uh, for blood disorders, like taking your blood and giving you new blood. It's called a blood transfusion, but to make sure that goes off without a hitch, there are a couple considerations, right? If I took blood from you, humble viewer, and I put it in me, it might not go that well. One, you could be dirty. I don't know. And two, what if we don't have the same blood type? What's a blood type? Why is it important? Come back tomorrow and I'll tell you. Let us know down in the comments how you feel about Test Tube Plus, how you think things are going, and if you have ideas for future episodes. We're always looking for new ideas. We brainstorm every week trying to figure out what we can come here and talk to you about. So any help you could provide, we would love you for it. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. You can find all of these episodes as an audio podcast over on iTunes as well. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can find me on Twitter if you want to chit-chat. I'm at Trace Dominguez. We'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.